God, we thank you that we'll just be able to apply some things to our lives. God, we thank you for peace of mind. We thank you for a sound mind. We thank you for a mind that doesn't wander or gets into worry or anxiety, but it just is running on pure things. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, uh, real quick, uh, I probably should have said this before I pray. We might have to pray again. But yesterday I was, I was working with something, some plastic and some pliers, and I had my glasses on. And it's something snapped and it hit me right in the eye uh, under my glasses, which was kind of crazy. And um, so my eye this, the, is real sensitive to the light right now. It doesn't hurt, but every time I look up, the, the little thing blinds me. And then I look down and I can't see anything. So we're going to have fun today. But we're in our series, Matters of the Mind. And it, uh, this is week seven. So if you've missed, go back on the website, go back on Facebook and listen to them. We're really wanting to talk about mental health. This past year, for me personally, it's just been crazy with everything in the news, everything with COVID, all this stuff. It's just battling in your mind. And you, because you don't know what's true, what to believe, or what's going on, and you're hearing several different, several different things, we want to make sure that we have good mental health. That's not a term. That's a goal. Okay, that's something we want to accomplish. That's a touchdown we want to score. Okay, if we're using sports, it's a goal. But how do we stay mentally healthy and fit? Well, think of your brain as a muscle. All right, you want to exercise it. I, I, I play solitaire on my phone a lot. I, I like playing solitaire. It gives me a little bit of time to defrag and it gives me a puzzle to fix out. But there's also ads on it because I'm too cheap to buy it. There's ads on it. And there's one that says, experts say this will make your brain work out. I'm like, okay, anyway. But we want to exercise it. We want to develop it. And, and, and we want to work out our brain. But are we mentally lazy, right? Oh, I just don't want to think about it. Oh, I just don't want to do that. Oh. We're going to talk today about how we want to develop our mental strength and mental discipline. And we really want to just, just as a prescription, I, I didn't want to wear my, my, uh, pharmacist outfit today to give you all a prescription, but we've got something we're going to hand out later that's a test. Haha. -ha. You didn't know you were getting tested at church today, but you will. And, and we're all going to pass this test. It's not a math test, although math does work your brain out, but there's a power in the mind. Now listen, research indicates that the average person thinks approximately 50,000 thoughts a day. 50,000 thoughts. That's what they say. I, um, okay, that's a lot. But they say that every thought sends electrical and chemical signals throughout your brain, ultimately affecting each cell in your body. Now, I'm reading this. This is what they say. This is not what I say. But our thoughts influence our sleep. How many times do you lay down in bed and you can't sleep because your mind is racing? Or are you thinking about tomorrow? I remember when I was younger, we would be good. The, the day before youth camp, we couldn't sleep because we were so excited and ready to just spend all night awake and, and doing this type of stuff and spending time with God. And, and our mind was just going, 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 going. And then all of a sudden, we just fell asleep. Maybe our minds got tired. But I was actually listening to um, a, a message, and they say that your mind, the way you think, can create a path. Now, I'm not a farmer. I just drive by farms and that's my expertise, okay? But have you ever noticed someone that has cattle and cows, they tend to walk in the same direction and they create a path, right? And that's what our mind does. Our mind creates paths and sometimes they're good paths, sometimes they're bad paths and we have to get out of it. Now, they also say 90% of your thoughts you have today are repeats of yesterday. So that's 90% of the thoughts that you have today are repeats from yesterday. If they're good thoughts, then you gotta get off that path. If they're bad thoughts, you gotta get out of that cycle and you gotta create new ones. Now, remember last week, we talked about that there's 5% of the things that you do and is only you can do. Remember, it was 85% of the things you do, anybody can do. Doesn't that make you just feel like good about yourself? That Almost everything you do, anybody can do. So, like my job, someone can do my job with training. So that's the other 10%, okay? That, that whatever you do, if you train somebody, they can do it. But there's the 5% that only you can do. And I use the example of I can't pay somebody or hire someone to go to my kids' sporting events. I didn't want to hire them to go to the choir concert when, it, you know, grade school choir concerts aren't fun at all. 
I'm just saying. But anyway, but there's only 5% of the things only I can do. I can't hire someone to tuck my kids in at night. I can't hire someone to help my wife out with the dishes. I can't, well I could. Uh, but anyway, there's only 5% I can do. But remember, so that these percentages, that 5% focus on that. Well, these 90% of the thoughts that are the repeat from, from yesterday, we need to make sure that they're good thoughts. And we're going to figure out how to do that. But mental health includes our emotional, our psychological, and our social well-being. How we are doing up here affects everything that we do. Right? It affects everything that we do. It affects how we think feel, it affects how fast we drive, it affects what, what we do when we get cut off when we're driving, it affects how we treat coworkers, family, friends, it's everything. So we are going to do that, uh, we're going to fix things today, but listen, to be mentally healthy means a life of joy. We're going to talk about joy today, not my aunt joy, but a life of joy. It's peace of mind, it's confidence, it's confidence, being able to walk around, you know, strutting a little bit because you're confident. A healthy self-image, a self and well-being, inward happiness and fulfillment. This is our goal. Freedom from the inward pain, freedom from inward fear, freedom from discouragement, joy. Well, how do we get joy? The definition of joy is an emotion invoked by well-being, by success, good fortune, or by the prospect of possessing what one desires. A feeling of great pleasure and happiness, joy. Now, we're not talking about the occasional bad day. We're not talking about the occasional, you get bad news, and so you process it. We're talking about cultivating a lifestyle of joy in our lives. How do we get there? Well, here's the prescription for mental health. On our first slide up on the screen is Philippians chapter four. We've probably talked about this. You've probably heard it. But this is it right here. It says in verse 4, Always be full of joy in the Lord. And I say it again, rejoice. So if, if Paul was writing this, and, I, and I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know if he was writing this from jail or wherever he was at, but in his life, he says, always be full of joy in the Lord. So this is Paul who's been in jail. He's been shipwrecked. He's been stoned. Not, I mean, with a stone, okay? He's been all this, and he says, "Be always be full of joy in the Lord, and again I say rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. He goes on, he says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all he has done. That's rejoicing. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Now, real quick, we'll just kind of pause right there. It says, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. He's not talking about, God, which cereal should I have for breakfast this morning? Should I have eggs with bacon or eggs and sausage? I'll wait on you. He's not talking about that. He's talking about when you've got something going on, pray about it. When you're making a decision, pray about it. If you're making it looking, look at making a big thing or a small thing. He's talking about things that are bothering you. Don't worry about it. Pray about it. Go to God with it. He goes, then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. We can just say it like this. If you don't mind me saying it this way, which exceeds anything that's going on in our world, which exceeds anything that's happening in our lives. God's peace is greater than that. And so he goes on and says, now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. I said all that, but I'm going to say this, all right? I said all that, but I'm going to follow it up with this. He goes, fix your thoughts on what is true. We can just end right there and we can preach the rest of this message. Fix your thoughts on what is true. Fix your thoughts on things that are honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. He goes, keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. This is the prescription for good mental health, is to ask yourself the question, self, is that true? If it's not true, I'm not going to think about it. Well, what, I, what if I don't know if it's true? Well, find out if it's true. Is that honorable? Does that bring honor to somebody? Does that bring honor to God? Does that bring honor to my spouse? Does that bring honor to my kids? If it doesn't, 
kick it out. I'm not going to worry about it. Is it right? Is that right? Hey man, is that right? Then don't think about it. Is it lovely? Think about it. I tell my wife that. Hey, I'm lovely. Think about me all the time. Anyway, is it admirable? Is it excellent, worthy of praise? We have some things we're going to be handing out, but if we just took those, that part, is it right? Is it true? Is it honorable? If we implemented that in our lives, it will change how we think. It will change what we spend time on. It will change what's in the garden of our brain, what we let grow. Because listen, negative thinking corrupts our brain and triggers harmful mental states like anxiety, moodiness, depression, all things we want to stay away from. Irritability, negative thoughts do not come from God. They don't come from God. So kick it out. Check this out. We use this with our kids all the time. If I was going to live in their bedroom, would they like that? No, it's their bedroom. My house, but their bedroom. What if I bought a skunk? Maybe I trapped a skunk. And I let it live in their, in, in their car. No, you know what? That stinks. It's not right. Someone would say, that's not right. Well, it's not right. Why would we let somebody, or better yet, what if I moved into your house? Hey, uh, that room right there? Yeah, I'm just going to move in with my skunk. And you're like, no. Right? I was going to say something about adopting cats, but that's too close to home for some people. I'm teasing it. We were talking with uh, uh, about getting cats. I'm not a cat person, but you know, cats are cool. Anyway, if you feed a stray cat, it's going to stick around. We've heard a lot about that in Basin lately. We had a cat that was stray, and it was uh, we we fed it for a little bit, and we were like, no, we can't do that anymore. Listen, if you are going to let something live rent free in your house, it's going to overtake your house. You can't let these thoughts live rent free in your house. I've only got so much room in my head. I don't want something living in there that shouldn't be. I'm sorry about the cats. Cats are okay, by the way. No, I'm teasing. I'm glad you adopted them. Negative thinking corrupts our brain. Harmful mental states like anxiety, moodiness, bad illustrations during a sermon at church. Negative thoughts do not come from God. 2 Timothy 1.7. Sorry, I just threw myself way off. <laughs> For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. God's not given us a spirit of fear. And that last one is self-discipline. Ever go on a diet? Self-discipline comes right at you and goes, hey, how you doing? Uh, well, not good right now because I'm hungry. Anyway, 1 <laughs> Corinthians chapter 15 says, But thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. He gives us victory over sin things in our mind. He gives us victory over the battle going on up here. Listen, we have the ability because right thinking is a choice. Does that make sense? Right thinking is a choice. It's, it's, it's a, I'm going to do it or I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go on a diet or I'm not going to do it. I'm going to spend my money wisely or I'm not going to do it. I'm going to you know treat my family right or I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go to work today or I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do this or I'm not going to do it. It's a choice. We all have a choice. We must decide what we allow in our brains. We must decide what we allow our brains to focus on. Right? Plain and simple. Are we going to let, are we going to let our brains focus on that or not? Whose report are you going to believe? God's report or this report? Are you going to, you going to do fake stuff or real stuff? Ask yourself, is that true? Someone comes up and says something. Is that true? I'm not going to think on that. Right? I'm not, I'm not going to let that think in my mind. Now, if what Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, if it was easy, he, didn't, he wouldn't have had to write it. Right? If it was easy, he wouldn't have to write it. Like, for example, he did not write in the Bible, look both ways before you cross the road. Because that's easy to do. Right? You teach your kids that at a young age. At some point in time, they get it. And they stop at the road, look this way, look this way, and they cross the road. If it came natural to always think positive and have good thoughts, there would have been no reason for Paul to write that. But there'll always be some junk that tries to come in our brains, and there'll always be uh, things coming in there. There'll always be something to complain about. Ain't that right? 
always be something to complain about. I mean, it's nice and sunny outside. It's only 61 degrees out. It's not 65, right? Well, the weatherman said it's supposed to be 70. Speaking about that, anybody see the weather forecast? There's a 30% chance of rain. There's a 70% chance of not rain. Why are we focusing on the 30%, right? I mean, I know that's, that's there's a reason why they do that, but anybody ever watched the news lately? It's all bad. It's all bad. And then they do like the last five minutes. Well, and the good news of it today, you know, this, this charity got this or something like that. It's all bad. It's all bad. Report card. Oh, you got an A, you got an A, you got an A, you got a B, you got a C, you got an A, you got an A. Why'd you get that C? You focus on, on that. Man, you got four A's and one C? You got one C? You're grounded forever. Don't come back until that C is an A+. Plus. No. We focus, we try to, we got to focus on the right things. We focus on the C. We focus on the 30% chance of rain instead of 70% chance of not rain. We got to focus on the good stuff. James chapter 1 says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Are troubles going to come our way? Yeah. But we must consider it joy. We must say, all right, troubles are going to come my way, but God's got my back. Focus on that. Focus on God getting your back. He says, Joshua challenged the Israelites, choose today whom you will serve. For as me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord. Anybody ever sat out by a campfire? I love campfires. I love bonfires. They're kind of fun. Um, it, it, but a lot of times I'm so tired that it's like, okay, I'm done. But, you know, we talked about last week how that campfire, uh, if you keep the logs together, it burns up bright. That's why we need to stay close to God because if one log falls off, it's eventually going to go out because it's away from all, all the rest. But if one spark of that came up and it landed on your clothes, you just brush it off. It's not going to burn your clothes. It's not going to burn you. It's not going to create a forest fire, uh, you know, type thing. It's just done right and so we have to do that with the thoughts if a thought comes up that's kind of a crazy thought a wild thought that's not it's oh sit there and and if it's a little spark puts there and you go you know you don't go oh my fire my fire now you just brush it off you just pat it out and it's gone same thing with our thoughts you just get out is that true no get out of there is that honorable no get out of here you just brush it off we have to do that in our lives we have to brush them off you don't pour gasoline on, right? Unless you can't get the campfire started and you want to create a little mushroom cloud of it. I did that one time. There's leaves in there and a wooden light, so I poured gas in it and, and uh, said, Miles, watch this. He was in the house and I lit it through there. <clears throat> leaves went everywhere and he's just inside going, that's awesome. And I'm like, shouldn't have done that. But anyway, you, you brush them off, you don't pour gas on them. But what are you talking about? Oh, this bad thought is coming in. Oh, I don't know what's going on in the economy. We don't know what's going on about this. And we're like, oh, this, oh, this, oh, this. Brush it off. It's okay. God's got our back. Or we pour gas on and go, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do today. What are we going to do? How are we going to get through this? I don't know how God's going to take care of us. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And pretty soon, we're running around. The sky's falling we're like Chicken Little. So we have to... Uh, number one, we have to right thinking is a choice. Number two is we have to, to turn from random reactive thinking to deliberate purpose driven thinking. Have a purpose. Have a, we have to deliver it. When you bring your thinking into the domain of your conscious or your creative control, you'll rapidly discover that in a, there's an enormous advantage you have in sculpting the conditions of your life. When you bring this into reality, you can actually choose what you think on. You can actually choose the thoughts that stick in your head. Well, what are you talking about? We're no longer going to be held hostage to bad thoughts. Okay? We're no longer going to be held hostage by our thoughts, but we're going to take our thoughts hostage. I was listening to a, a, a podcast, and they talked about how there was a news story of a, of a guy that tried to carjack another guy. Okay? And, and this guy pointed this gun at this guy, and he's like, get out of your car! And I guess the dude was like, uh, military? And so, real fast with his left hand, he turned the gun around and took it off of him, and the guy's like, whoops. So instead of being taken hostage, he took hostage of what was going on. Now, I'm not saying we gotta be ninjas like that, okay? But in our minds, we got to. When the thought comes in and goes, comes, tries to take us captive, put fear in our lives, we have to say no. Is that true? Is that right? Is that honorable? Nope, get out. 
you, you, you turn it around. You tell the thought to get out. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, that's the next slide, number two. It says, we break down every thought and proud thing that puts itself up against the wisdom of God. We take hold of every thought and make it obey Christ. Another translation says, we capture like prisoners of war every thought that in, in, insist it bow in obedience to the anointed one. If the, Basically, if that thought does not line up with God, you eject it. You eject it out of your life. Anybody remember the old James Bond with the ejector seat? You just press a button and boom, eject it right out of your life. How do you do that? Say, thought, I'm not thinking about you. That's not right. I'm not thinking about that. Thought, get out of here. If you have to verbally say it, you'll only look weird for a minute. And trust me, a minute is not bad for me. I'm like usually a 10 minute weird person or all the time. But listen, you cannot worry without having worrisome, worrisome thoughts. I challenge you. You can't. You can't worry without having worry thoughts. That's just going to happen. If you have worry thoughts, you're going to worry. It's impossible to, to be afraid without thinking of thoughts of fear. If you don't have thoughts of fear, you're not going to be afraid. Thinking, talking, and worrying about what you don't want can never bring what you do want. Never thinking, talking, and worrying about what you don't want can never bring what you do want. Jesus said, can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? You can't. Whatever, gives, whatever we give our attention to is the direction we follow. That's a good one to think about right there. Just as our body follows our head, you know, it's hard to we walk like this all the time. It'd be kind of weird if we run into something. But, but we always follow our head. We always follow where we're going. Now, now I, we can't do it here because we have windows, but if you're at a play, imagine you're at a play and, and, or a recital or something, and one person's singing, and they put the spotlight on that person, right? They're singing a song, and our focus and the spotlight is on that individual. Does everybody else in the cast and the set and all that, does that just disappear? It's still there. You walked up there, that person's still there, and then you might be frozen, you know, or whatever the stage term is for that. Um, but that thing is still there. So if we, if we, it doesn't make everything else disappear, we're just focusing our attention on that. If we spotlight things that are wrong in our lives, or we spotlight things that are good, does that mean everything else disappears? No. We can aim the spotlight uh, or does everything else disappear, but we focus on what is highlighted. It's not that our difficulties disappear. We just choose to focus on the resolution. If I've got something going on in my life and I choose to focus in on God, does that mean that it all disappeared? No, it means I'm just focusing on God, what is right, what is true, what is honorable. I'm trusting him to help me get through the situation, but I'm focusing on him. If then now, if this goes into different relationships, if I choose to focus on, on every on the one thing that my wife does wrong right does that mean all the good stuff goes away no rather than expecting and planning on the best marriage um, we are mentally retreating repeating and resigning ourselves to the future of disappointment because we're focusing on the wrong things dwelling on our problem doesn't fix it it just makes us an expert on it you want to be an expert on your problem no, I want to be the expert on the solution I want to be an expert on getting it through. Winston Churchill, uh, he was a pretty cool guy. He says, a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity. An optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. Don't focus. Don't focus on the problem. Focus on God. A thought comes in. You got a problem. Is it true? Is it honorable? Is it right? Is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it admirable? Is it excellent? Is it worthy of praise? Think on those things. Oh, I'm just never going to get this right. No, don't say that about yourself. Man, I must have messed up. I'm going to get it right sometime. I'm going to get it right the next time. With God's help, I'm going to get it right. I was dealing with, uh, uh, I was at work the other day, and I'm a creature of habit. Anybody else like me? Creature of habit. You do the same thing, that's what you do. So we're basically making these parts. We make them all the time, all the time. 
And you do the one, one side, and you set them all aside, then you flip everything over and you do the other side. Well, the things need to be smooth, okay? The inside of the part needs to be smooth. When I was making them, doing the same thing I've always done, it was not smooth, it was chattering, and it was getting me frustrated. And I'm like, God, how do I fix this? And on the inside, I felt like I was saying, do it this way. And I was like, well, I'm just gonna adjust it this way. And I didn't do it. And I got started getting upset. And so finally, I did it the way that I felt that I, God was saying to do it. Boom, perfect. Okay. It was just, it did things the same. The only thing is, I think it was the material was different. But, but anyway, I have to be understand that, that if I can't figure it out, if I can't fix it, God knows how to fix it. He knows how to make it right. He knows how to, to, to uh, repair. He knows how to take care of it. We have to say, okay, instead of me saying, well, I can't fix it. I'm going to run them all that way. No, okay, fix it real fast. This is how I need to do it. And I focused on the solution, not the problem. How do I fix it? How do I get it? Got it done. This is really good. Number third, the free thing is the fruit of our life today is, is the outcome of what is allowed to grow in the garden of our mind. Now, Next week, sometime, we're going to be planting our salsa garden because I, I guess the frost time is over. But we're going, to be, we're going to be putting tomatoes in there. We're going to be putting jalapenos in there, some peppers. You know, we're not planting weeds. We're not planting weed either, okay? Sure. You know, uh, Becky's parents' farm, they would grow wild. And uh, I said, hey, as long as you tithe off of it, you know, you can pay. Really. He's like, it's, I didn't plant it there, and I'm like, sure about that? Anyway, so uh, the fruit of our life today is the outcome of what we are, what we allowed to grow in the garden of our mind. Our third slide is Luke chapter six. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit. A bad tree cannot produce good fruit. A tree is identified by his fruit. Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes, and grapes are not picked from. Uh, other bushes, the bramble bushes, or those things. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. Another translation says, from out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What are we putting in our garden? Our heart is kind of like our thoughts or our feelings, and what are you planting in your garden? In Galatians, it teaches us that what a man sows, he reaps. Every thought is a seed. It's a good seed, it's a bad seed. Are you letting it grow in your mind? Are you letting it blossom? Are you letting it produce fruit? If you let a worry thought grow in your mind, it's gonna produce worry. If you let a good thought grow in your mind, it produces uh, uh, goodness. Proverbs 23, seven says, for as he thinks in his heart, so he will be. The way you think, can either multiply or shrink your gifts and your talents. The way you think, are you positive? And we all know the people that are absolutely super positive. I remember a friend of ours, always positive, super positive all the time, bubbly. But like, you must have been a cheerleader when you were growing up because like, you just, oh, no, no, you know, just so happy. It's like, stop, like, have a bad day. It's okay. We, we give you permission to have a bad day. And I remember the first time, we, they, you know, they had a kids and, and, and the first time she got mad and just, you know, you can't do that. Or like, what just happened? You know, because she's always bubbly. But you have, you can either, the way you think can either multiply or shrink your gifts and talents. Listen, it says, but the words you speak from Matthew chapter 15, the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. From, from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, immorality, theft, lying and slander. These things are what defile you. So we, the, the bad thoughts, which is what defiles us, Proverbs chapter 23, this, or 4, 23, this is a good one. Guard your heart above all, S, above all else. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. A lot of times, uh, well, I mean, we, well, not a lot of times, but when we traveled, we had a TomTom. -tom. It was a cool thing. I got a Christmas gift. And it would tell us how to go. The only problem is, 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 is it didn't update. So <coughs> when they changed the, the, when they added highways and stuff going to Becky's parents' house, it was useless till we got to Des Moines because they, they, they made new highways. And the, the little car icon was just floating through cornfields, going over lakes, and it was just going everywhere. 
But one time we decided to go a different way and it determined our course. It determined where we were going. If Tom said turn right, we turned right. If Tom Tom said turn left, we turned left because we didn't know where we were going. Now we just use Google Maps, right? And Google, Google Maps is cool enough to tell us where the cops are at or if there's a, a construction zone or things like that. But, but that determines the, the, the way we go. If we know the road to go, we don't need Google Maps, right? Or maybe we just have it up there to see if there's construction or see if there's cops or something like that. Um, but the, the guard your heart, it determines the course of your life. If you're letting bad thoughts, seeds grow, it eventually gets into your heart and that's where the course of your life goes. If you're always negative, what are you putting in your head? Right? If you always have negative thoughts, the Bible teaches us we reap what we sow. James chapter 1, we're getting ready to close here in a little bit. When you're tempted, never say God's tempting you. For God is capable of being tempted by evil and he's never the source of temptation. He's never the source of bad thoughts. He's never the source of, of evil. That's from the devil. The message translation says, the temptation to give into evil comes from us and us only. It comes from the devil too. We have one to blame. We have no one to blame but the, the leering, seducing flare-up of our own lust. Lust gets pregnant when it's a baby. Sin. So sin grows up to adulthood and becomes a real killer. We've never heard how to train your, we've heard how to train your dragon, right? You ever watch that movie, How to Train Your Dragon? Well, here's how to train your brain. Eric, can you pass those out? I don't have them up on the screen, but we'll pass them out. While we're doing that, Romans chapter 12 says, don't copy the behaviors or customs of the world. So if we're not copying the behaviors or customs of the world, we're doing something different. We're doing something different than the world says, and we're going to look at these questions here to ask us how we're doing it. Whatever improvement we're looking for, whether it's in our marriage, our finances, or our health, begins with changing the way we think, aligning our thoughts with God's thoughts. The stinking thinking needs to get out of the way. So whatever, whatever time frame you want to do with this, if you want to do it once a day, do it once a day. Once every couple of days, do it on, on the odd days or even days. But use this as a pattern of how you think. What are the five things you're grateful for today? What's that doing? That's telling you to find five things you're grateful for. You might not have done that ever. You might not have ever said, what am I thankful for? What am I grateful for? What are your five strengths or positive traits? That's getting you to look at yourself and go, you know what? I have some things that are positive. I have some things I'm good at. Because there are some people that think they're not good at anything. Right? So it's just changing our ways. What are my five best achievements so far? It gets, you, it gets you to look at things you've done right. It gets you to look at things you've done well. Who are the five people who love me the most? And I'll tell you right now, find them, identify them, and hang out with them. All right? We'll, we'll see why in a second. What are five things I'm looking forward to in the next seven days? You know what that's doing? I'm looking forward to this. It gives you something. It gives you some positive things to look forward to. Okay, then each of those questions demands a positive response. What are the five things I'm looking forward to today? Well, I have a court date tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to that. Well, I mean, if, I mean, if, it's, if you're on the bad side of that, you're not looking forward to that. But maybe you're on the good side of that. You know, maybe someone done you wrong or whatever. Now, here's some negative questions. Well, why would you want to ask yourself negative questions? Here's why. What are five things that make my life really stink right now? Get it out. If it's a situation you put yourself in, figure out how to remove yourself from it. How do you get the skunk out of the bedroom? Right? You know, what if it's self-inflicted? Well, try not to do it anymore and try to rectify the situation. Ask God, how do you make, God, how do I make my life not stink? That's, it's, it's forcing us to, to, to put things into perspective. What are, my, what are five of my most damaging weaknesses? What are the things that I do that cause damage? So what that looks like is this what looks like this. I tend to speak before thinking, right? To give you a little bit of insight into my life, you know, I'm not a big fan of wearing a mask, plain and simple, but I do it because um, out of respect of what I might say to somebody else, plain and simple. 
because I've been in places where I've forgotten it and someone said something and I've had to bite my tongue because it's like, listen, I just forgot it and, and, and I'm trying to get on in my life, all right? So that's why. I mean, I'm just telling you right now, that's, that's a damaging weakness. Thinking, not thinking before I speak, right? I've done, I've done that for a long time in my life, so I have to identify that. So it's like, all right, someone says something to me, think before you speak. All right. My wife makes a meal. Do you like that? Well, not really. Well, no, this is horrible. What do I say? You know, that's, a, you know, find out what a damaging weakness is. It may not damage you. It may damage relationships. What are my top five recent mistakes or blunders? Learn from them. Learn from them. Don't dwell on them. If you identify that this is a big, this is a blunder, I messed up, don't dwell on it. If you if you made if it's a relational mistake and you made some and you offended somebody or you messed something up, for, ask for forgiveness. Right? Don't dwell on it. Number four, who are the five people who would really like to see me fail or suffer? That's a, that's kind of a, a drastic way of saying it, but but who are the five people in my life that that don't really care about me? I'll tell you right now, don't hang out with them. Remove it. Remove people from your life that always bring you down. You could say it like this. If there's constantly people on your Facebook feed that always are, when you read whatever they write, always put you in a negative mindset that brings you down, mute them for 30 days. I've done that. I've done that to other Christians recently. None of you guys. Except maybe you're Except maybe one. No, I'm just kidding. Because you know what? I was choosing to see what was going to be put in the garden of my mind. I didn't, maybe I didn't want to, you know what? Maybe I should just delete Facebook altogether. What are five inevitable things I'm absolutely dreading in the next seven days? Well, if you've got to do it, ask God to help you out. Ask God so it's not dreading. You're not it's not going to be this. How do I make this better? God, how can you help me with this? These questions, along with, is it true? I'm going to think on true, not false. Is it honorable? I'm going to think about honorable, not dishonorable. Is it right? I'm going to think about right, not, I can't say left, wrong. Right? I'm not going to think on wrong. I'm going to think on right. Okay? I'm not going to think about things that are unpure. I'm not going to think about things that are unpure. I'm going to think about things that are pure. I'm not going to about think about things that are unlovely. Or you could just say that they're full of love, or they're they're walking in love. You know, I'm not going to think about things that are hate, just hate and love or opposites. I'm going to think about things that are admirable, not unadmirable. Or I'm going to think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. I'm going to think on those things. Those are the thoughts I'm going to let go in because when I do that, I'm going to have joy. I'm not going to be irritable. I'm not going to be um, always on edge. I'm not going to be that way. I'm going to be happy because joy is not a destination. It's the path we choose to walk through life. It's an outward sign of our inward faith in the promises of God. It's within us and it must be released a joy is the sum and substance of emotional health. Listen, fake joy is better than real depression. Right? Not a fake laugh. Fake laughs are not good, especially in church. Brooke's not up here to do it. Anyway, I always get fake laughs. Dave's over there. He'll give me a fake laugh. Uh, he's good for that. No, I'm just teasing. Uh, my jokes were good. I'd get real laughs, right? That's what you would say to me. I would say they are. I'm going to choose to think that they're right. Anyway, fake it till you make it, right? Is that what someone said? How about we faith it till we make it? How about we just say, God, I'm putting my trust in you, and I'm going to make it. God, I'm going to put all my, my, my cards, all, all, my, all my stuff in your, in your hands, and, and I'm going to trust you. I'm going to move forward knowing that you've got my back, knowing that you won't let me fail. To get my son out of bed today, I challenged him to climb down the ladder of his loft bed with his hands, not his feet. All right, I had to do something creative parenting. 
it was not going to be good because he wasn't getting out of bed and I have a five gallon bucket that I could have filled with water. But then I rethought that and I said, I'm going to have to clean that up. And so I said, no, I'm not going to do that. So I said, let's just pull something out of the creative thing. All right. So we did it that way. So I kind of was like, I'm just going to figure out what works and I'm going to trust God that my son can get out of bed because he's not going to get out of bed because we let him go to a friend's house and spend the night. He says three o'clock in the morning. I said, you, you fell asleep by 10. And then he fell asleep watching Star Wars last night. We always stayed up way too late because mom's not home, right? But she won't know, well, I wonder if she's gonna watch this. She's probably listening to this right now. We joked around that when Miles is asleep over, we're gonna turn all the clocks ahead by four hours. So they think it's four o'clock in the morning, but it's really midnight, right? So we're just gonna, we're gonna, anyway. Fake joy is better than real depression. But if we faith it till we make it, we will have real joy. We will stay away from the mental things that bog us down. Let's pray. God, we thank you that we can ask ourselves, is it true, is it honorable? And I'm going to think on that. We can ask ourselves, is it right, is it pure, is it lovely, is it admirable? Is it, is it worthy of praise? I'm going to think on that. I'm going to choose to think on those things. If a thought tries to come in our brain, if a, if, a, if a thought tries to plant seed in our lives, I'm going to choose to kick out the bad thoughts and think about the right thoughts because I want to have joy. I want to have peace. I want to have joy in my life, peace in my life. I want to have joy in my brain. I want to have good, joyful thoughts, not bad, harmful thoughts. Because then we can, it just radiates in every part of our lives. Imagine having a bad day at work, but you go home because and you're, you're happy. You're, you're, you don't take it out. You don't, you don't say, hey, kids, I'm, I'm having a bad day. Can you just go, go play on a tablet or go play in a room? No, we say, hey, I've had a bad day. Let's play a game. I had a bad day. Let's do this. And you, you start having the, those 5% of the things that we are only us can do. We start having joyful things in it. We start focusing on those. And it brings real joy and peace health to our lives. If something goes wrong, we don't dwell on it. If we make a mistake, we don't dwell on it. Hey, that mistake cost, cost me some money. Well, I'll never do that again, but I'm not going to dwell on it. Just because I made a mistake does not mean I am a mistake. God, I thank you that we can apply these to our lives and we can have great mental health. God, I thank you that if we are in a different part in our lives where our relationship with you is not where it's supposed to be, then you can bring that to fullness. And you can bring it. All we got to do is just ask. So at this time today, if you if you need anything from God, now's the time to ask him in church. You can ask him anytime you want. But right now you're surrounded by fellow believers. You're surrounded by people that got your back. We thank you that the, the presence of God is, is here to move in our lives. So God, Help us move in our lives. Remind us. So we're going through our day. Hey, is that right? Is that true? Is that honorable? Is that admirable? Is that lovely? Is that pure? Is that excellent? Is that worthy of praise? Is that worthy of calling up your friend and saying, hey, man, you never guess what happened. That's what worthy of praise means. Is, hey, you'll never believe what happened. Oh, no, I'm, you know, Eeyore stuff or whatever. No, we don't want to do that. We want to focus on what's worthy of praise. God, I thank you for moving in our lives. I thank you for moving and helping us with these matters in our mind. That we can have great, healthy minds. We won't be down, we'll be up. We thank you for that. In Jesus' precious name, amen. I encourage you to take those home. If you want to reword the, the, the questions, um, you can. Um, but I'm telling you right now, when you focus on those positives and you find the negatives and you don't dwell on those, it's going to change your life. It's going to change things. It's going to change how we think on some things. And I mean, that, 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 that really, it's called the 4-8 because it comes out of Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Is, what it, is it true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, admirable? You start saying, hey, that's not one of those, then kick it out. And trust me. It's going to change the way we think on things. You guys have a great week. Next week is family.